Stop spending the money on wars and they should spend it on the things that people really need in a very desperate situation. And I, and I think this government um, is a disgrace that they are going to see children dying in this country because they can't be fed and looked after. We know that there remain... Now we're stopping this to go live uh, to Tehran. Uh, the President Rouhani is speaking to the cabinet session. or the subway, whatever it is, they have to be disinfected from the beginning of their activities. They have to be disinfected till the end. They're revered drivers. They have to use masks and gloves. And the passengers also, they have to, and they are entitled to have seats uh, to sit on, not more than that. So that this is something that we approved yesterday in the committee, and we set a seal on it, and based on these measures, we will go forward for the capital, Tehran, and major cities we have. Uh, lack of uh, transportation vehicles, so we are advising people to use their personal cars, to use uh, internet taxis. These are better than public transportation vehicles. Of course, the public transportation vehicles, those who deem necessary, they use it vis-a-vis uh, -vis the personal hygiene into consideration. So, the Ministry of Transportation, they are using coaches to be used in intra-city commuting in Tehran and the bigger and bigger cities. In Tehran, some buses are to be purchased. If, for example, in Tehran, we have 500 buses needed and in other provinces also, all in all, we need 1,500 buses. If uh, they can use the intercity or intra-city buses, they can apply them in the next 30 days. By the end of uh, this month, we are ready to assist them in this regard, especially with the first installment of their payment for purchasing their buses. For the first installment, the government steps up to the plate, the municipality pays it, but uh, we are supposed to get information from them and the Ministry of Health is going to take it into consideration and assess the situation. Uh, pending our uh, later actions. Some other decisions we made and some other discussions we had, of course, the final decision on them will be made next month, and that is the issue of gatherings in the holy month of Ramadan in the mosques and other places which are usually occupied by people, whether they are Husseinias or mosques or wherever. There is a public gathering, a religious ceremony, ceremonies of recitation of Quran or supplications. Usually people in the holy month of Ramadan, they have different gatherings and ceremonies. So we have put the final decision on this for the next meeting. However, if our situation goes the same way that we are experiencing now, naturally, we will not have uh, any physical gatherings. And this is what the national radio and television organization and social media have to uh, take the responsibility so people use them. Of course, in case of any eventuality, we will make a final decision on that. The Ministry of Health has some protocols, and those protocols are pretty much important to it. And based on those protocols, they decide which businesses to resume their activities or what gathering should be made or not. 
And that is um, the basis of that protocol is the capacity uh, with regard to hospital beds, uh, nurses, doctors, sub ICU beds, respirators, or ventilators, or whatever equipment or supplies that the Ministry of Health needs. Thank God it's been good up to now, but it is uh, limited after all. And this is the basis of our activities in our decisions. In all the decisions that we make, these are the issues that we take into consideration. The other basis is the capacity of the health ministry with all its uh, resources, uh, doctors and the medical workers, uh, laboratories, and all those who are working, they have to have the capacity of testing so that they can do the necessary testing. Somebody is suspected of having COVID-19, he has to be or she has to be tested, and this should be available. This is one of the parameters that we have to take into consideration. The other issue that the Ministry of Health regards as a pivot is that if somebody is infected with COVID-19, they can uh, identify those who have had contact with them, people who have had close contact, contact with them, because naturally the person has infected people around him. Today, in a in some figures that we received, it was uh, about the city of Zanjan. We saw that people who had been assessed and monitored in that group, 80% of them, they had been infected. And in the next stage, they had gone and seen what people they have they had contact with that person, and they saw that 21% of those people who have had contact with the first group, they had been infected too. So this is pretty much important to us. And the fourth issue that the Ministry of Health has to know about the figures is that uh, the ministry has to know that the trend should be um, on the decline. If it is on the rise, it, it is a matter of concern. This, these are four principles that the Ministry of Health is taking into consideration. So if our people see that we are pretty much strict on observing protocols, if we are uh, standing firm on our recommendations about public transportation, these are based on these four pivots so that we can go forward uh, step by step and to get to a point which is bearable, which is tolerable, and then we can get to acceptable points and then some favorable points. This is, of course, my categorization. Of course, the Ministry of Health has some specific categorization about containment or controlling. This is, in my words, this is how we should proceed to get to a point to get to a favorable stage. So here I want to raise some issues and tell our people. And one of them is that today in our meeting, the Ministry of Transportation uh, gave us some statistics. It was about the month of Esfand, which, uh, which was about uh, 30 days ago, and also some statistics about a week ago or two weeks ago. These two statistics had been on a diagram, and on that diagram, we saw these two lines that were so close, and in some times, in some areas, they were juxtaposing each other. So that means that when we didn't have any stricture or any obligation compared to the time that we had some stricture in practice, we don't see any differences. And uh, that means that people 
just by simple words and recommendations when we give them in simple words they understand that because of their uh, safety they follow the guidelines they don't need a stricture they don't need a, uh, excessive force so these are statistics very beautifully showed how strong and elevated our culture is. So here I want to urge our revered people. This week that we have begun a new phase of uh, measures in other provinces, low risk businesses are resuming their activities. We are urging people to practice hygiene issues, to have their commuting limited to essential ones, their uh, commuting to stores and businesses should be as little as possible. Our workers and also, and also people who are working in the business sector and in the industry sector to take all the hygiene issues into consideration we together we can join hands and get through this until now uh, if we have uh, succeeded it was it has been because of the cooperation it has been because of the sacrifices we know it is hard to stay home some people have businesses to do when they have shut down their businesses it is hard on them people and kids who used to go to a school, it is hard for them to stay at home. They're all there, but we don't have any other way. So we had to join hands and pass through this stage. The next, the second issue is that the same way as our nurses and our doctors, all the medical workers, they have been working around the clock to protect people's lives, and they made sacrifices. Other people also made sacrifices as they could. Of course, uh, medical workers are working in hospitals. Uh, their lives were at risk. They made great sacrifices, but there were also other people who made sacrifices a lot. You see, what is needed for people in terms of food supplies are drivers. They have tried to get them from ports to get them to their intended destinations. And these statistics were pretty much huge to this year compared to the previous year. In terms of volume, we had 16% in 16% uh, 16, 16 of rise in terms of volume and also 9% of the commuting of the trucks we have had a rise compared to the previous year. So despite all the hardship, the commuting, the shipments have been made, these great um, services in transportation, the same thing we have had in banking, uh, oil and gas industry everywhere. We have had all these services done well. And you all know that these days some countries, they have uh, begun to be frugal in exporting food supplies. For example, a country that used to sell wheat, now it doesn't sell wheat. It could be because of two reasons. They are afraid of having uh, a scarcity or they may fear that the situation will get worse. But thank God our situation is in a way that we have, uh, more, we have supplies more than any time before. And our great farmers, they have made great efforts. We pay tribute to all those farmers and we are estimating that our wheat production is more than the previous year and other products also is the, the same for the previous year. In the industry, we have the same situation. The latest statistics that we received from the central bank, we got to know that in the last quarter of the last Iranian year, we saw that our industry sector 6% 6, 6 rise it has had. So this means 
that um, efforts have been made. Of course, these days we may have a disruption in our activities. Of course, uh, we will get through these days and great days will come ahead. Uh, we will have a great summer. We will have uh, passed this virus. This virus is so unknown and naughty, we can't talk about the future of this virus easily. Everybody is talking about it with uh, caution and with concern when, when it comes to the future. Of course, we hope that the situation will be made better in the near future, in the, f in the following months, and we will make up for this. So hereby, I want to thank benefactors. They have made great efforts and they have done huge um, actions. We had a report from the... Uh, seminary, the Islamic seminary in Co in Qom, we saw that 6,000 clergies are working in Qom to contain COVID-19 and offering services to people. Our benefactors, they are active everywhere, and this is huge. This is pretty much important in terms of the nursery homes, the asylums we had some reports from the minister of uh, welfare and we saw that uh, it is clear that we have had and we have made great efforts everywhere just pay attention to this we have 775 centers and the minister of health referred to them from these 875 centers just in 23 centers, we had uh, confirmation of COVID-19 cases. They are all clear. The others one, the other ones are all clear because, you know, these services are done voluntarily. Some of them, they we have some paramedics who are employed, but there are some paramedics who are volunteers and they are not employed by the Ministry of Welfare. So they offer services to the elderly, to the disabled and they make sure that nobody is infected. So from this, so even more beautiful and in interesting than these statistics uh, is that from all the elderly and uh, disabled, 35 people have died of corona and uh, the majority of them, they were older than 80. So just pay attention to these uh, statistics. The all fatalities in the among the elderly in the last month of the previous Iranian year, of course, the year that that we passed. When we compare it to the month uh, the uh, the previous year, it's the same. So nothing has been added. So if we have had a five percent of mortality rate, it's the same. So when it comes to the first month of the Iranian year in Farvardin, so from uh, this population of uh, forty nine thousand people in Farvardin, which is which was a very tough month, all the fatalities, the corona patients, and all of them. There were 52 people, and last year, the same year, last year, 165 people had died. So you see, you, we have had a decline in the number of fatalities, despite the hardship. So this means we have had uh, great protection. 52 fatalities this year and 100 and uh, uh, more than 100 fatalities last year. So this means the constant care for these centers. Of course, we don't want to compare. Of course, in that report, there was a comparison between Iran and some European countries. Of course, if uh, they deem uh, necessary, they will release those figures. There's a huge gap between these two figures, the situation in Iran and the situation in Europe. For example, we just suppose um, we have the number of fatalities very little, a few percent, for example, 7% or 5%. 
a very low figure, but they have had 22% in some countries, and in some countries even more than 22%. So some people don't like this comparison. When we are saying that when we have a better situation than Europe, they don't like it, or they are in a worse situation, they make a lot of fuss. These uh, satellite TV channels, how angry they are, they say the Iranian president has said that we are in a better situation compared to Europe. Yes, that's true. We are in a better situation in containing the coronavirus. And the reason is the people, is the great people, and is the efforts done by our uh, health workers. The reason is our IRIB. The reason is our armed forces. The reason is the uh, social media, our celebrities. The reason is that everybody has joined hands, so you don't have this. And you are wishing for something that you don't have. Yes, you have the coronavirus, and we have the coronavirus too. And we have had a worse coronavirus, and that is the virus of sanction. We have a virus, we have had a virus of sanction and coronavirus was added to it. You didn't have that sanction virus. You have only one virus, we have two viruses. But our people, they resisted that well, they joined hands, they assisted each other, they cooperated with each other. And this is a point of honor for every one of us, for every one of us, for every one of our people, yes, it's true. We are having a better situation in uh, battling this virus. We have a relatively better situation compared to other countries. If you want to get upset, okay, let it be. This is a reality. This is a reality you have to know and you have to understand it. So you can just contact the Iranian people and you see how different our situation is with yours. And you see how much a gap there is. And the, the final point that I want to raise here is that we have reached a success. Of course, these days are days that we are working. Everybody is uh, uh, working hard. We have a lot of problems. Uh, the Americans, they are um, launching an aggression against us. We, if we want to get a loan from somewhere, what lies they are making. Although they are grappling with the virus themselves and they know how the Iranian people are coping with these problems, they are adding to their pressure day by day. And this is and this inhumane and anti-humane uh, work will be registered in their history forever. So among all these hardship, uh, our lawyers, our central bank, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, all our friends, they have, they achieved a great success in a legal battle. $1.6 billion. $1.6 billion of Iranian assets. Americans were ha, had confiscated in Luxembourg for months, a lot of legal procedures. So thank God, a few days ago, we managed to release that money. And under these hard situations, this great work done by our lawyers and their efforts to uh, release the money that was owned by Iran, that was owned by the Central Bank of Iran, and the Central Bank of Iran belongs, and all its assets belong to the Ira Iranian people, and thank God they released the money. And the final word, I'm, I want to talk about the commuting between uh, cities and uh, cities in a province. If in a province, its governor, or the uh, governor, uh, if the province council, they have decided to ban commuting from today, all the restrictions 
on commuting between cities and provinces are lifted. No governor, no province uh, is allowed to ban commuting between cities. Our police forces will take this issue into consideration. Our besieged forces will take this decision also into consideration from today. Commuting between cities and provinces is totally um, free between the provinces, from one province to another province. When we are saying that there shouldn't be commuting, this ban will also be lifted in a week, in less than a week, God willing. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, you've been watching uh, President Rouhani speaking in a cabinet meeting regarding the situation of COVID-19 in Iran and how the country has been handling it. You talked about public transportation issues like uh, disinfecting subway trains and buses that are being conducted now that drivers need to wear masks. Passengers must have their seats so that they are not uh, sandwiched uh, to the wagons and buses. You advise people to use internet tax services more and that Tehran needs more buses, like 500 buses, he said, on the streets that they're working to provide. Depending on the level of observance of health protocols, decisions will be made as to which businesses could resume their operations soon. The president stressed that conduct of uh, more tests that needs to be done by the health sector, that uh, holy fasting month of Ramadan is also around the corner, so decisions will be made whether to hold religious congregations or how to hold them. Soon decisions will be announced. Stringent health protocols must be observed so Iran could gradually normalize things soon. As regards provincial trips, it said statistics indicate that people don't need to be forced to avoid such travels as they have done so on their own without being forced to. He has stressed that by cooperating, we can leave this behind us. Food and stuff uh, has reached uh, their intended outlets sufficiently this year. No problem in that area. He mentioned that Iran will have a greater wheat harvest this year, despite all the difficulties. And also the, the fact that 6,000 clergymen and seminary students are also helping with the fight against COVID-19 in different ways. Of course, there's been a large number of volunteers offering their own services as well. They don't belong to any NGOs or government organizations. Number of fatalities from coronavirus has declined in Iran while it has soared elsewhere in the world, like in Europe and other places. Iran is better off in tackling COVID-19, President Rouhani believes, and that's because of the synergy and cooperation among the people and government bodies, the health sector, and uh, all of that in spite of U.S. sanctions. So he says we're suffering from two viruses. We have the sanctions virus and also the COVID-19 virus that we're dealing with. And one last point, he said that $1.6 billion of Iranian assets and uh, money was frozen in Luxembourg by Americans, and it was frozen for months, but the Central Bank of Iran and the legal authorities tried and managed to get their hands on that sum of money, fortunately. Just disrupting the regular course of our programmings to take you live to the uh, Iranian government cabinet meeting uh, headed by Mr. Rouhani, the president. Let's just take you there and take a listen to what he has to say today. Our ICU beds may not have the capacity to receive patients. These are one of the points of honor for our health workers. Of course, our doctors and nurses and all those in the health sector, they made an extraordinary sacrifice in this period. They worked around the clock. There was no hour that they stood aside from working and trying or feel tired. There have been some countries where patients have, re have referred to hospitals. There has been uh, empty beds, but not enough nurses, but not enough doctors. There have been countries countries, we have seen in our statistics, there have been beds, but the ICU units have not been able to receive patients. In our country, we didn't have even a single instance of this problem during the past three months. 
We're talking about the last month of the last year and also the first month of this year in Iran. We didn't have anybody who has referred to hospital, who has been rejected or not having enough beds to receive him or because of poverty, he has been rejected from hospital. Everybody has been under protection of insurance. And people who have been underprivileged, nothing they have paid. And even expatriates who are living in Iran legally, their treatment was also free. The third work that the government had to do was providing the supplies needed for personal hygiene of people or for equipping nurses and doctors, whether be it test kits, or respirators or ventilators or CT scan beds that have been needed or gloves or masks, disinfectants. Whatever was essential and was needed by our people or our hospitals, there was an all-out effort made in government workshops and also private workshops. Our armed forces, the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Industry, everybody has stepped up to the plate. Hopefully, and thank God, uh, the N95 face masks which are needed by our nurses or special protective gear such as gowns or medicine, we don't feel any lack. Every day they are being supplied. Our people also, the majority of these equipment, especially disinfectants, and in some cases, there may not be sufficient, but by multiplication of production, such as masks, this scarcity would be resolved in the following days. The situation in our country regarding this point is also uh, comparable to the situation in developed countries. It's been a great and huge thing. The fourth point that was among the responsibilities of the government was uh, supplying the essential items and supplies for the ordinary and everyday life of people. There hasn't been a case when people refer to supermarkets to see empty shelves, or they are told that they, are, they have to go back and come back in two days to get what they need as essential something that many countries were grappling with. I hereby I want to uh, thank the central bank and also the transport and transit sector, the customs department, and all different, all the other different sectors, I want to thank them. During this period, the transportation and the transit because of the health guidelines,
lines, we had a, a decline in them, and in some occasions there has been a halt to them, but for transporting goods and cargo, this year the commuting of our trucks in the past two months has increased compared to the previous years. So this shows that whatever has been needed, the effort that has been made, the supermarkets, the stores, the pharmacies, the production units, our customs sector, our transportation sector, everybody has been there. It's been a general sacrifice and a general mobilization. Everybody has stepped up to the plate and people have not felt any scarcity regarding their ordinary needs and their everyday needs. This is something else that the government had to do and did it. And I want to tell our revered people that this year, thank God, in the agricultural sector, we have a better situation compared to the previous years. And we, regarding agricultural products, we are estimating to have 3.5 uh, up to 4% of increase in the production. Regarding the production of wheat, thank God, we are estimating to have a production of 14 million tons of wheat. Whatever we need, we use it inside the country, the bakeries, the country's silos, the, in the industry sector, whatever they need, they are being supplied this year. And, and in other sectors, the statistics that we are receiving from the agricultural sector, we are going through very favorable situation regarding the production of rice. We are predicting to have 2.6 million tons. This is a considerable um, increase and it's going to be sufficient for our country's consumption. We are predicting to have a 1.7 million tons of sugar be it from the north or be it from the sugar canes, the bulk of our needs is being supplied and provided regarding uh, uh, farm animals, regarding the uh, sea animals. We are also seeing an increase in the production. Thank God the schemes that we had, 46 hectares of cultivation in Sistan and Balochistan, nearly Virtually, it's been active. The planning that has been made for Khuzestan province has been prepared and they are working on the farms. And God willing, we will have a better and more uh, production in regarding agricultural uh, cultivation. The provision of water, the building of dams, and also because of the God's grace and the precipitation that we had this year. It's just a little lower than the previous year, but thank God we had a great year and we will have a great year. In the following days, our swamps, many of them have been filled with water. Urumiye Lake, our Urumiye Lake, which was uh, one of the major issues for the government, has returned to its condition seen in the last in 10 years ago. So this is a huge thing that has been done. Of course, lots of other things need to be done, and we will do them this year. Great schemes we are going to have regarding water and earth, and we will do them in summer and fall. And God willing, we hope all the schemes regarding the uh, 
drought other governments have done and uh, they have taken some strides. Uh, this government, this administration also is going to take some strides. So all in all, our conditions are good. Our enemies should not go after propaganda to say, oh, the, the administration had a bad condition last year, so this year is going to have a bad time. It's not true. Last year, we had a good economic growth despite uh, uh, the pressure that we had. We, our economy, our minus oil economy and our oilless economy, we had an in, we had a growth last year. So and this year also all the predictions that they are making, they are saying that we're going to have an economic growth this year. Also, we're going to have a good condition regarding inflation compared to the past two years. It's not true. Like the way the foreign media are uh, going after the propaganda, they are saying people are grappling with problems and people are going to see a lot of difficulties. This year is going to be a good year. Of course, it is obvious we are having problems like the sanctions and the coronavirus. They are there, but the bleak picture that they are painting and they want to make people disillusioned and uh, feel disappointed is totally baseless. All of us, we are joining hands and we are having each other's back and they, everybody, like people, are ready and they are there. The, the sacrifices made by our agricultural, by our industry, by our industry sector that they have made, God willing, we are going to have conditions not like the one that has been painted by our enemies and God willing, despite all the problems that we are having, we are going to have a relatively favorable condition for people in the year that we are in. And this was the fourth uh, move taken by, made by the administration for providing the needs of the ordinary life of people. Of course, we are thinking about this for the whole year, as you know, from the four million tons of staples that we had in customs. One million tons of them have been discharged. The central bank has been able and has managed to provide the necessary currency. The central bank in, ju in just a few days in the New Year day, in the New Year holidays, has provided the money and the funds necessary for discharging one million tons of goods from the customs. So it is obvious that based on the predictions that we have made, we are going according to the plan and God willing, we will have God's support and his grace upon the people of Iran and we will be able to get through this. The fifth uh, responsibility, that the responsibility that the government had was uh, helping those who have uh, been affected by the coronavirus pandemic. This is not an easy thing to do. All across the world, this is one of the problems, the issue of unemployment, the issue of industries or businesses that have been affected. It is clear flights are disrupted and halted. The tourism industry has been disrupted. It's been um, virtually, it's been brought to a halt and many sectors of the economy have been affected. You see, even regarding the price of oil, how it has been affected. Um, and now, despite a cut in production of oil, still, you see, it's not going uh, to the favorable uh, point. So it is clear that this year is the year that in which all the industri industrial sectors have been affected by this disease, and we have to go for proper planning to tackle the issue. And God willing, based on the planning and the scheme that we have made our people, they can have the assurance 
to have their necessary needs provided. So regarding the businesses affected by the coronavirus problem, we have made two decisions. The first one was about the health sector to provide the needs and to meet the needs. Or in the unemployment fund to have the necessary funding. We have allocated the necessary funds and we will gradually pay them. For loans to be given to people, we have provided 75 uh, million, 75,000 million tumans for people, 25,000 uh, million tumans for loans. Uh, and also a figure has been allocated by the central bank to be given to people and also to businesses that have been affected. Yesterday, we, for this 75,000 billion tumans, some part of it we decided to be given to people. Gradually, these plans will be implemented and the central bank will give the necessary funded funding to the categories designated, the ministries designated like uh, the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Industry and the Ministry of uh, Labor that are working on this. They will designate the necessary and those uh, units that have been affected to receive the loans. And God willing, uh, based on the planning that have been made from uh, one month later, they can receive these uh, loans. And 23 uh, billion two months we have allocated for all the people, for all those people who receive the monthly cash subsidies, 23 million families. For each family, we have allocated 1 million two months. And this, also, we made a decision on it yesterday in a meeting that we had. The, the, diff the difference uh, figure to be given uh, as a, as a non-interest loan, the government received the responsibility. We made the decision and it should be approved in the Coronavirus Task Force 2 in our meeting that we're going to have on, sen on Sunday. And these issues will be raised there and uh, will be made, uh, will be made uh, available. This figure also we are trying hard to give it to people before the onset of the holy month of Ramadan. Of course, everybody who is volunteer and who needs it, they can use this loan, this zero interest loan. People who uh, express their readiness, they can receive this loan and gradually we will deduct the installments from their cash subsidies from tier on. For three million people who are very and who are very vulnerable and they need the money, they uh, we were thinking to um, give them aid in from the past two months. Yesterday, we decided to give them a stimulus package for the Ramadan prob um, month two. Also, for four million families, we have allocated a special stimulus package. We have made the necessary decisions on them. Uh, so this is how the government can help. Of course, regarding this, there are some institutions, uh, be it from the 
budget that they receive from the government or other resources, they are helping and they want to help. I order the vice president, first vice president, to convene a meeting and to do the necessary coordination so that everybody can help however and how much they want. If it is from the budget they receive from the government, they can give it to us and we distribute it or they themselves, they can give it. Of course, there is a need for a coordination between these institutions. It shouldn't be like this. Uh, a person receives two stimulus package from two institutions and somebody else doesn't receive any. And God willing, this coordination will be made. The other issue that I want to raise and I want to stress is that we today are going to have the biggest IPO in our stock market. This is, and this indicates something that we had promised for the 12th administration from the very beginning of uh, my meetings that I had with the Iran, with Iran's leader, when Iran's leader said Ayatollah Said Ali Khamenei was in Mashhad and we were having consultations uh, for choosing the cabinet members. And so we were beside the Holy Shrine of Imam Reza and we were discussing the nominees for receiving the positions of the cabinet. Some of the issues that the leader stressed was uh, that to downsize the government so that the government is not uh, having uh, authority over a lot of institutions and the stocks could be given to people. And also the leader said he had the same order for the armed forces. Also once in and two times again, the leader stressed on this issue on some other occasions. Also, the leader had an, at a point about Shasta and the social welfare. Somebody had uh, sent a letter to the leader and he had said that Shasta is not uh, under the control of the administration. The leader had said, no, it's uh, also within the purview of the government and the social welfare also has to relinquish its authority over Shasta. It's, so the social welfare has to gradually relinquish its authority over Shasta. This is the first time in Iran's uh, stock market to have uh, such an IPO, such a, such a flotation, all the companies under the control of control of Shasta. There are about 180 big companies. Uh, all of them together, they are going to be presented in the stock market. This is a new model that is going to happen. This this behemoth, this giant, is uh, being presented to the stock market in one place. I want to congratulate on this to our ministry, to our minister, and all the relevant uh, uh, officials. They have done a huge thing to make Shasta transparent, transparent. This Shasta, which was a point of controversy for a long time, today they have made it transparent. If it is not transparent, the stock market does not accept it, does not list it. So, yes, sir, last year, uh, when I wanted to present the budget for to the parliament for this year, I said in this year, we were going to have a huge move uh, regarding the stock market, and I followed on it, followed up on it constantly and uh, I wanted to make sure that this was uh, done so it's a huge thing that was made this big and this behemoth holding has been presented and today 10% of this 
huge company is presented in the stock market. So twin, 2 million people who are in the stock market, they can benefit and they can take this about 8 million shares is being they are being presented and people can buy it and this is one of the big developments in our stock market yesterday of course i was saying and i was seeing that some people who are all who are always uh, antagonistic against us that they were saying that the economy in Iran is not good, but its stock market is good. So they had to confess this, that the stock market in Iran is extraordinary, is huge. Hereby, I want to thank the Minister of Economy and also all the officials in the stock market. They had done a great job both last year and this year this is the huge thing that is being done today this is um, meant to fight corruption when we are talking about the fight against corruption this is the this is where we can have an anti-corruption drive where we can make everything competitive people can um, come to the scene and I want to ask all the other sectors of the government to follow this model that means to present big uh, sectors like Idro, Imido, or big funds for oil, for the defense sector. They can follow this model and they can um, present blocks of shares on one occasion, 10% or more, 20%. We're not talking about the quantity. The, the main issue of the present, presenting of this is the, it's the matter. I want to congratulate on the social welfare. welfare. I want to congratulate on the Ministry of uh, Labor and welfare for this. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Iranian President uh, Hassan Oni speaking um, from the Iranian capital, Tehran, elaborating on the situation uh, in the containment of the coronavirus outbreak. He hailed medical workers for their hard work to contain uh, the spread of the virus. He said that hospitals have been equipped amid the outbreak. He added that the situation is, in fact, comparable to that of developed countries, and there's been no lack of food stuff amid uh, the spread of the virus. Uh, praises, uh, he also praises people from all walks of life for their cooperation and uh, did say that it will be a good year for Iranians despite any of these claims and that uh, agriculture production will rise this year thanks to proper precipitation. Uh, that's it with the latest slide from the Iranian capital, Tehran. Do stay tuned, though. There's uh, plenty more to come here on Press Steve. We're for this half hour, Iran has for the first time in the world developed a smart system to detect the coronavirus on the spot. The apparatus devised by Iran's Islamic Revolution Guards Corps was unveiled in a ceremony attended by IRGC Commander Major General Hossein Salami. The top general said the device can detect the COVID-19 virus as far as 100 meters away in just five seconds. He said the system does not need blood sample for diagnosis and can detect the virus both in humans and on surfaces. Salami said the apparatus has been tested in different hospitals and its performance has been 80% positive. The top general also said the device can be used to detect any type of virus. Figures by the Central Bank of Iran predict the inflation rate will be lower than that of previous years despite the coronavirus outbreak. That's what President Hassan Rouhani says. Rouhani made the remarks as he dismissed attempts by the enemy to paint a black picture of the economic situation in Iran. He said the government has adopted good measures to provide the essential commodities that people need. Rouhani also said efforts are underway to support both individuals and businesses affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The president said finances have been earmarked to provide the requirements Required medical supplies, as well as to grant loans to affected people and businesses. The coronavirus outbreak began in Iran in mid-February, affecting nearly 76,000 people so far. Of them, over 4,700 have died. A group of Iranian actors, musicians and cultural activists have launched a charity workshop that produces face masks and distributes them among the less privileged people to counter coronavirus outbreak. Press has been to all those uh, uh, events held, uh, whatever press conferences and has been to hospitals, clinics, streets and I know uh, he knows 
he's got uh, really first-hand information because he's been there uh, in person. Uh, so, uh, Rambar, good to have you with us. Uh, with that uh, intro that I had just, I just already announced, looks like the things are looking up in Iran when it comes to containing COVID-19 compared to other countries. Well, Behruz, you are absolutely right. As a journalist, I have traveled to the city morgue. I have gone to the city's uh, main cemeteries. I have uh, the, done the driving through different districts in the capital, Tehran, to see for myself how people are coping, and at the same time, to see if there are any banners that indicate some, some, some families have loved, have lost their beloved ones. I have seen very few cases so far, Behruz, and that's good news. I think there is a simple explanation as to why there is no blame game in Iran and our politicians and especially our government officials are not trying to point their finger that they're blaming fingers at any country for this devastating uh, public health crisis because they are in charge Behrouz. Mm -hmm. the government is in charge it, it has had the backing of the armed forces the the medical staff the health teams from, from across the nation and of course the leadership and of course the media and 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 people who have decided to stay uh, indoors and, and, and take these social distancing measures very, very and absolutely seriously. So the thing is, the, the, the truth of the matter is that Iran is coping with the virus and the government has managed to bring that the number of uh, new fatalities down. And this is good record for Iran. I think Iran is not lying. The government is not lying. The nation is not lying because the truth is out there. If they want, they are more than welcome to, to, the, to Iran and see for themselves that Iran has finally managed to bring the situation under control, unlike other countries like the United States that are trying, that are, that are struggling at the moment. But Belarus, this is just half of the story. I think from now on, the government has two important challenges that it is going to face. First is that it needs to open up the economy. That, that is what the government is, is slowly trying to do from, uh, from early hours of Saturday this week. And at the same time, make sure that the, uh, the economy is going to do fine. We also need to find the, a vaccine for this deadly disease. This is, this is up to the government and our health officials to work with the rest of the international civil society. Because if you're asking me as a reporter, I think we have passed the curve. We have leveled the curve uh, for the time being. Mm -hmm. And from now on, I, I give you my guarantee. I give you my confidence that we are going to see much, much lower number of new fatalities in Iran. So let's cross our fingers and hope that the rest of this story is going to be just fine. The government is exactly. very confident. Mm -hmm. People are cooperating with that and we are going to see what's going to happen next. Yeah, we're all hoping for that. Thank you very much. We're going to take you live now where to the Iranian, the Iranian defense minister is making a statement on President Rouhani's remarks. Let's take a uh, listen. Now, it seems that the whole world is our country and we are fighting the same country, the same enemy wherever we are in the world, and that's why this war is holier than before. That's why defending the lives in Iran and everywhere in the world based on social and health protocols, we were deprived of a parade of Iranian soldiers, but Iranian citizens at home and all the business activists, they are going on a parade of honor and a social a parade of the protectors of people's lives. They are seeing this and they are saluting the Iranian army and Iranian soldiers. The Iranian army, whether in during peace or whether during war, be it soft war, be it the front lines, or in the streets, or in the military bases, or in hospitals, the, it is always protecting people's lives. And lives of Iranians and lives of Iranians, lives of Iranians, all, you during the holy defense, you defended the nation. Poor and rich, uh, from villages and towns, old and young, everybody was there. You were the Iranian army and you will remain to be the Iranian army. 
One day, the enemy was standing vividly in front of you and you were seeing the enemy vividly, but now the enemy is hidden and doctors and nurses are standing at the forefront of this war and you are protecting them. Once you were battling in the forefront and now the medical workers are in the battlefront and you are protecting them behind the scenes. We are sure a front which is backed by the army and the armed forces will definitely emerge victorious. The world will not forget this war, the most human war during in the, in the history during which all people and armies fight for people's lives. That this historic parade is excelling all the other historic parades in history. All the, the songs and all the hymns and all the chants, we will remember those on this day. We learn social distancing from the army. We learn making sacrifices for the nation and for the country. And we, f we learn fighting for peace from the army. We learn faith, is, faith in God and serving the nation from the army. The grandeur of what the army is doing in different social occasions during uh, natural disasters such as uh, flooding and earthquake and other scourges shows the necessity for the army's preparedness during peace also. Our army is not a symbol of warmongering, but also but is an epitome of protection of the nation and different people come and go and the army serves them. The army is still remains and the army remains in history be it during a parade, a physical parade, or you do not do so for protecting the soldiers. The chant of the Iranian nation on this day, which is the Iranians, which is Iran's National Day of Army, saying that the army is sacrificial for the nation and nation is sacrificial for the army. May God protect you, Hassan Rouhani, Iranian president. You are listening there to Iran's defense minister, Brigadier General Emir Hatemi, who was reading out a statement on behalf of President Rouhani who couldn't make it on this uh, occasion. He's dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, General Hartami strongly praising the armed forces there for helping the country in its battle against the coronavirus outbreak. And it's on the occasion of National Army Day. He also noted that the army is for defensive purposes and it does not seek a war with any nation. Just live images there of a ceremony in the Iranian capital, Tehran. Okay, we... Sh the difficulty in observing protocols, and if you want to advise people to use their personal cars, we will have traffic conge congestion. So we chose the second one when we advise people to uh, drive their own cars, but and now we are having the traffic jams around the city. If you want to observe all the 
protocols, we don't have enough buses, at least for the metropolitans, including the capital Tehran. So we were supposed and we uh, called on municipalities to buy the necessary buses for in the next month and the government will help them. And also the buses that are not working, they have been grounded because they need to be fixed it, so um, officials are supposed to overhaul those buses. The government has promised to help them also so that we have more buses to uh, transfer people. Of course, we called on officials to add the coaches also, the buses, the inter-provincial buses to the public transportation in cities as well. So we hope these uh, uh, decisions will be implemented well and our people will continue to uh, go for the safety measures to protect their lives and their loved ones in the holy month of Ramadan, in which we have more private prayers and supplications with God. Hopefully, IRIB, the radio and television and social media will help people so that we would have the spiritual atmosphere and people will feel the spiritual atmosphere at their homes. God willing, we will be able to get through this problem just the way that we had a we had promising statistics from health ministry. We urge God to help us and help the medical workers, including the doctors and, and nurses, so that we would have a declining trend to the end. Thank you very much. Well, that was the President Hassan Rouhani was addressing a meeting of the Coronavirus Task Force in Iran. He said that there is an application in use of monitoring the health of the health situation of people with or without COVID-19 in public places. And also antibody tests will be applied in addition to the previous one, and it can indicate if an individual already contracted the coronavirus, and hopefully that way it could identify more cases. He said that the pandemic has put the whole world to trouble, but Iranians uh, are put into further trouble as they're under U.S. unilateral sanctions. And also people were not able to hold their Noru's traditional festivities, which is a major festivity and occasion in this country, where families uh, meet each other. That was not possible this year. And also we have the fasting months of uh, Ramadan that's uh, adding to these difficulties because uh, uh, they cannot get together during the special religious uh, congregations held during this month, which matters uh, a lot to Iranian Muslims. So people have to avoid get theaters of any kind for at least another two weeks. That's the decision made. And uh, they will uh, wait and see what the situation is like in terms of COVID-19, and then they will make a proper decision soon. He said, in the meantime, construction development projects uh, have been going on in the midst of uh, the pandemic and all the measures taken against it, uh, and uh, they should go on. There were some uh, water, uh, uh, for instance, the projects that uh, the president inaugurated a few days ago. He was referring to that and said that such operations should go on so that people won't lose uh, their jobs. And uh, the president also announced that low-risk businesses will already resume the operations. They started operations last week uh, and in Tehran also this week. And now medium-risk businesses like shopping malls can also uh, resume their operations, provided that they uh, observe the health protocols that have been announced. And then uh, more buses will also join the public transportation fleet so that congestion problem could be tackled. That was the gist of uh, the decisions that President uh, Rouhani announced uh, during this meeting with the task force fighting COVID-19 in Iran. Now, uh, let's uh, go back to our news bulletin. Now, let's do the Foreign Ministry spokesman, President's live coverage. Mm -hmm.
باعث مشکلاتی شده به اضافه اینکه آیا ایران برای حل مسائل برنامه موازی با اون برنامه آمریکا داره به خصوص که ایران با طالبان مشکل because uh, Iran uh, has recently had some contacts with the Taliban in the past year it's been able to have some negotiations with the Taliban thank you well, that was a, the right point you mentioned yes the Islamic Republic of Iran as a neighboring country of Afghanistan is willing to see a stable and peaceful Afghanistan along our eastern borders. Our policy have always been in the same line. Unfortunately, because of the emergence of the problem and the political differences that exist in Afghanistan that have been created after the presidential election there, so the Islamic Republic of Iran, as a, as, an, as a friendly nation to Afghanistan, is, Iran has started its own activities. Some contacts have been made by foreign minister Zarif. He's been in contact with Afghan officials and also uh, Dr. Tahirian, the special aide to the foreign minister in Afghanistan affairs. He has also had some visits to that country and he's been in Afghanistan since yesterday and he's uh, almost met with all Afghan ranking officials or today he is meeting as we speak. So all what Iran wants is that the sites uh, uh, will come to understanding and that a comprehensive government would be in place so that peace and security in Afghanistan could be contributed to. This is the main step for having an Afghanistan which is peaceful and secure alongside our borders. Uh, neighboring countries uh, have always been uh, have had priority for us all the time. So the efforts that Americans are making, I'm not involved, I'm not informed, but uh, the efforts that Iran is making, they have been independent efforts uh, within the framework of the people and government of Afghanistan. It's in their interest. And we, as a neighboring country, we are feel duty-bound to uh, do whatever we can in our own capacity in order to see peace and security restored to Afghanistan. Now, Ms. Sajjati from Iran Press. Looks like the contact is not yet ready. We'll go to the next contact, uh, Mr. Tarak Nijad from Irna. Well, if uh, it's not prepared, okay. Ms. Kalantari from Ilna News Agency. Hello, Mr. Musavi. Hi. I want to ask you about Dr. Zarif. If you could offer some explanation, you offered some brief explanation, given the fact that the Astana meeting uh, was going to be held in Tehran at the summit level, it was postponed. Well, the agreement is Dr. Zarif going to Syria on an independent basis or on the basis of the Astana process? Well, there is a, a host of issues that will be raised uh, during during this uh, travel, and there are many reasons for this. You know, after a while, it was necessary f uh, for a meeting to be held between officials of Iran and uh, Syria. For a while, there have been no meetings. So, a meeting in order to coordinate things, you know, given the situation that we are now. So, the coordination is needed to be made between Iran and the Syrian government. So. Uh, uh, this trip was arranged recently 
And Dr. Zarif, uh, there, you will uh, touch upon the regional developments and also developments inside Syria uh, as regards the fight they have embarked on terrorism. Some consultations will be made on those issues at the same time. The Astana process is still the most uh, important political process <coughs> that could uh, actually lead to a better situation compared to what we are now. So still, the Astana is on the agenda of the membering states, uh, Islamic, uh, including the Islamic Republic of Iran. So the summit of the Astana process was supposed to be held in Tehran, but unfortunately, because of the um, you know, health situation because of this uh, corona pandemic that's engulfed the world, uh, this has been postponed. So it... Uh, uh, doesn't mean that our consultations and coordinations uh, would be disrupted. This is a, a visit which is necessary to be conducted in due time. Hopefully it will bear positive results and um, until uh, evening uh, uh, the meeting will come to an end, I believe, and then we can talk about its achievements later on. Well, are, are you sure, Ms. Sajadi from Iran Press? This is the third time I'm calling her name. Ms. Sajadi from Iran Press. Well, if you hear me, Mr. Musafi, Ms. Sajadi, yes, go ahead. Good morning. Uh, sorry for the technical problem, the voice problem. Now, the question I have for you is that the sec foreign, Secretary of State uh, of the U.S. says that Iran's behavior is inter in contravention of international law, and the U.S. is seeking a proper response to Iran. What's your response to this provocative move of the U.S. Navy in the Persian Gulf. Basically, the presence of foreign powers, especially uh, uh, in our region, uh, we found them to be a source for instability and insecurity in the region. It's an illegitimate and illegal presence. This is our part of the world, our region. If uh, our armed forces are going to have patrols in the area, they should conduct that in a peaceful way. Uh, as far as uh, we know, uh, American forces, it was American forces who blocked the legal and uh, regular and routine uh, patrol of our forces in the region. And that uh, made uh, our patrol forces to show reaction and to issue necessary warnings to them. Well, for Mm. For long, long years, for thousands of years, Iran has been present in this part of the world, and the security in this region has been provided by Iran and uh, the literal states of the Persian Gulf, especially at Oman, that's right across from the Strait of Hormuz, and to Together, we have uh, secured this uh, vital waterway. As uh, our friends uh, in the IRGC also have announced in their statement, the foreign forces that maintain illegitimate presence in our region, we ask them in the first place not, not to stay in our region, and secondly, they should be committed to uh, maritime laws and regulations, so they shouldn't push our forces to give them warnings. So this presence, uh, whatever intention could be behind it, we are concerned, we are not satisfied with this. We express our dis dissatisfaction with their presence in this region, and we are hopeful that they are convinced to leave our region as soon as possible. Thank you. Now, Ms. Mogadam from Borna. Mr. Lutfullahi from Arman newspaper. 
سلام سلام وقت شما بخیر قربان شما من نمیدونم دقیقا پرس شد موضوع تنش در I don't know well, regarding the Mayor Tamish, it was announced that Iran has interested a Hong Kong freight. I want to ask you if it is correct. There are some disruptions in his voice. No, I, I got your question, okay. Now, regarding the interception uh, of the, that vessel, I have not been informed. Well, the, the naturally, the Iranian Navy has its own regular and routine uh, patrols. If they suspect anything, uh, definitely they will negotiate with them. And uh, based on law and also regulations, and based on our own rights, they will enter talks with them. Probably there has been a misunderstanding that has been... Uh, uh, addressed, but interception and other things I haven't heard of. Ms. Khadem Jafari from IRIB. She's not on the line. Okay, Mr. Ahadi, Mayor News Agency. Mr. Ahadi, if you're on the line, Go ahead with your question. Mm. No, it looks like he's not there. So we'll go to Mr. Mohammadi to from Khurasan paper. He's not there either. Okay, Ms. Opshanas from Sputnik. Hello, Mr. Musafi. Hi. I want to ask you about the fact that a while ago there was uh, the first insects operation between Iran and the European countries that was conducted. Now, rough countries are talking about withdrawal of the Europeans because of the U.S. pressure. Is this right? If other countries are willing, can they also join the insects mechanism? And if this mechanism, if there are some interactions, some positive uh, interactions, would Iran uh, go back on its scale back program and regarding, you know, could Iran change course? No, I, uh, we just said already that Instex is a prelude to. Um, make good on the commitments that the Europeans have had after the U.S. withdrawal from the JCPOA. For them to make good on their commitments, they announced that the, they require a financial mechanism in order to be able to do that. So, you know, in a way, we, we, we favored uh, the initiation and the operationalization of this financial channel, but we also announced that this is not all the commitments of the Europeans, it's just part of it. They have 11-point commitments that they have offered to uh, do in, in the field of energy, in banking, transportation, insurance, and other areas, they are also supposed to make good on those commitments. Well, they said that through insects, they could uh, act accordingly. And I haven't heard anything regarding the fact that uh, they are going back uh, and withdrawing from Instex. So we, anyway, we were not waiting for Europeans and we're not still waiting, so, but uh, it's better for Europeans to, uh, in under all situations, to fulfill their commitments. And they should move uh, in a direction where they could implement all the impl uh, commitments that they have had regarding uh, the rights of the Islam of Iran and our rights within the JCP. Hopefully they would move in that direction. And if, uh, if this is operationalized, because this is not, this is just part of the European's commitment. So 
Uh, as regards the scale and back of Iran's commitments within the, you know, the steps taken within JCPOA, Iran is not going to do anything to reverse course unless there is a balance between uh, our commitments and our rights within the JCPOA, which is not in place yet. So the rights that Iran has regarding energy, regarding banking transactions uh, within JCPOA, all of these have been stipulated and Resolution 2231 obliges all countries to facilitate this process. Well, uh, if such a thing happens, then Iran uh, would uh, start considering uh, to stop. We have announced that they, they, are, they are reversible. We can go back down on our uh, scale back. But we should be satisfied that uh, all our commitments have been met. Now, at the same time, uh, the, the other point that you mentioned, yes, uh, Europeans, uh, the one, they announced uh, when they started uh, the INSTEX, they announced that if other countries are willing to join this mechanism, uh, they are ready to accept them. Well, of course, it depends on the agreements that they could have with the European side, and Iran has always announced preparedness. No, Ms. Khadam Jafari. Hello. If you could hear me, I'll go ahead. Yes. I can hear you. You don't see me? It, it doesn't matter. I hear you. Uh, Mr. Musavi, as regards the issue of this human rights rapporteur, uh, Mr. Javed Rahman, uh, he has announced that Iranians regarding their prisoners, they're discriminating against them. I want to ask you your opinion. Well, I reject all the such comments and uh, reports because based on regulations and uh, the humanitarian way that Iran is treating the issue, maybe almost until uh, uh, two, three weeks ago, 95,000 uh, prisoners in Iranian jails, you know, the judges looked into their uh, dossier and then they uh, were found to be entitled to uh, be given furloughs, and they are They're now outside of jails, and they, that had, the furlough has been extended, and there has been no discrimination between uh, Iranian inmates or foreign foreigners or even the dual nationality prisoners that some people are raising. No, all, all the prisoners were entitled to the furlough, and they, they were not even ill, uh, but they could be subject to uh, some kind of infection. So. Uh, that's why all of these were considered and the action was taken. I believe that the uh, judiciary is looking into this further. The statistics that I heard about was uh, until the two weeks ago, and afterward I also heard that they are looking into other files and dossier, and if they... Uh, find it necessary, they will also uh, entitle some more prisoners to get some furloughs, and uh, maybe some of them may even be set free. So the reports that they are uh, talking about you know, regarding discrimination and some other comments, we, we reject them all. Ms. Rod from Danish True News Agency. She's not there. Ms. Ehavi from Isna. Well, Khadam was already conducted. Do 
Well, I can hear, I can hear our friends, but the people I named, they're not there. So Mr. Ali Jafar from Al Masira, if he's on the line. Miss Ehaghi, I think I saw her on the screen. Miss Ehaghi, if you are there, please go ahead. Is it ready? Well, the names are there, you know, on the list. The ones that are ready, you please let me know. Mr. Mohammadi from Khurasan. I can see Mr. Khalil Khan. <laughs> this is the, the the people I see on the screen. I should call them. It looks like. Sir Arash Khalil Khan, I can see you. Yes. Hello, Mr. Musavi. In the post-corona period, we see some changes and developments in relations between some neighboring countries. Some positive things also happen. Given the proposal that Dr. Zarif was following regarding regional cooperation between Iran and Persian Gulf Littoral System, I wanted to ask you, in the situation when the ground is paved to address some differences, how is this being followed up? And what's the perspective of relations with neighboring countries? Now, among the uh, good opportunities that the uh, coronavirus has created, um, uh, on this, besides the threats that it has brought us, well, somehow, uh, viewpoints and uh, opinions of different countries have got close to each other, and, uh, pro and priorities have kind of uh, undergone change. So we can see traces of uh, some changes in priorities and also in some postures and uh, stances in our region. That's what we see, you know. The Islamic Republic of Iran, under any condition, has been prepared to, uh, in the Persian Gulf region especially, to enter interactions and uh, close dialogue with neighboring countries. There have been lots of initiatives and plans that we we have uh, offered and we have put forward and without any precondition we said that we are prepared in any area or field that would lead to the removal of misunderstanding of any sort where we are ready to enter negotiations with our friends and neighborly countries now, now that you know that the, there's this health problem uh, globally which is uncertain uh, still, because diplomacy and cooperation always has the priority. So if the Persian Gulf Littoral States, especially uh, one or two countries uh, uh, that may have some uh, misunderstanding, if they are ready, Iran is also ready at any level and uh, under any condition any way necessary given the situation these days so we're ready to enter interactions with them and hopefully that could happen so if there's anybody else I have a two an event that is happening right here in Tehran that is uh, president of Iran president Rouhani uh, meeting with his uh, ministers let's just take you there and see what he has to say 
It shows cooperation and rapport among Iranian people. Our people have responded positively to our medical personnel and have heeded the request of the government and have uh, heeded the call of all experts and uh, scholars and intellectuals. And that is the, the second important point. And the third point was the procurement of equipment. In the early days, our nurses and doctors were concerned and they were mo uh, most uh, exposed to risk because we didn't have enough equipment at hospitals. There were not enough face masks. There, there were not enough uh, actually suits, uh, hospital suits and all that. Maybe in some hospitals, we had, uh, um, well, there were not enough respirators and uh, uh, ventilators, and we didn't have enough uh, diagnosis kits and all that. Even disinfectants, we did not have enough disinfectants and hygienic items at that time. Uh, we began a consistent and uh, non-stop campaign in the country. The state sector, public and private sector, both, all institutions, they contributed to this campaign. And now you can see that today, uh, when it comes to disinfectants, uh, high detergents, uh, hygienic supplies, health items and all that, uh, we can meet domestic demand for those items and we are able to export part of our production and products as well to countries which need those items. Even in the even when it comes to masks, face masks, of course we need still we need to meet domestic demand for face masks. I hope that in the near future we can even export masks as well. Concerning uh, diagnosis kits, now we can export those kits. Of course we have a lot of them. those kits are in demand in the country, are in much demand, but we can and uh, export them as well. We have kits for the diagnosis of uh, the disease. We can export these diagnosis kits as well. Uh, we can meet domestic need as well as uh, being able to export those items in the near future. It was very important to see that during the tough days uh, in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak, everybody contributed to the national campaign against it. And and now I need to thank all government institutions, armed forces, the private sector. I thank them all because uh, they were uh, with us during the early, since the early days after the, in the peak days after the outbreak of the coronavirus. Everybody contributed to the campaign. They began working at their workshops, at factories. They began producing items and they began working. If they hadn't uh, conducted those activities, then our market wouldn't be saturated now and our demand wouldn't be met because it is not only the campaign against the virus itself. We need to solve the problems which are the consequences of this outbreak. We need to meet the demands, people's everyday demand, day-to-day -day needs. It was a major feat. So I would like to thank the great Iranian nation, entrepreneurs, uh, knowledge-based companies, and all those who contributed to this campaign and made efforts in this regard. Well, uh, of course, maybe there was a small group, there are a small group of people who are profiteers and only think about their own benefits. Even under sanctions, they try to take advantage of sanctions or the coronavirus outbreak. They they have very childish thoughts. A very small group of people, of course, they have a very, they have childish thoughts, and we regret that. We are sorry that these this small group is directed by some elements outside the country, and even and if even if they are not attached to uh, foreigner foreign elements, they are just loud. Uh, I mean, mouthpieces of foreigners. I'm sorry to say that.
So they doubt about the figures, about the treatment of patients, about the progress that the country has made, about the efficiency of the establishment. Day in, day out, they just they ex keep expressing doubt about these things day in day out around the clock they try to uh, actually spread rumors on social media and all that in different articles in different media outlets everywhere they are trying to uh, actually create anxiety among people and uh, instill a sense of uh, uh, lack a lack of trust into people you know the most important thing in amid the coronavirus outbreak is people's trust and higher spirits. If they trust each other, if they have higher spirits, uh, this virus uh, will have uh, will affect us less. When a society is gripped by anxiety and a feeling of insecurity and a feeling of a, a dark future and all that, well, definitely the, uh, the virus will affect that society more. Uh, don't think that uh, if we have been successful in the fight against the coronavirus, it, it has been the government which has been successful. No, that's why some a group of people, they became anxious and all that. No, it is it was not the handiwork of the government. In the first place, it was the nation, the people who helped. If our performance has been, has been successful in fighting the coronavirus, it has been due to efforts by our, our people, medical personnel, personnel. Uh, of course, civil servants have contributed to the campaign. They are part of the uh, society and people. It was a national feat. We joined hands, everybody joined hands to combat the virus. So far, we have secured relative successes in combating and in fighting COVID-19. But if we think that we have completed it, the task, and if we think that it is, we are taking the final steps, no, we will, uh, maybe uh, that will harm and affect all the success that we have secured so far. No, we should not uh, negatively affect the success that we have achieved. So we should not take any action that ruins all our previous uh, successes. We, let's not take any action that could uh, destroy and ruin all the measures that we have already adopted. We have adopted, you see, we have been abiding by social distancing measures. People have stayed at home. Iranians have announced that, they're, that they are ready to combat that. We should keep doing this and press ahead with our efforts. So we are seeing that gradually some businesses resumed work that was because the country needed it this it was a necessity if this necessity is com uh, is coupled with the, the with compliance with health protocols we will continue to be successful so far this has been the case during the time I mean over the, over the past few days when uh, as you saw businesses uh, resumed work figures show that uh, we reached, uh, we have not uh, had any peak in this outbreak, this is outbreak, but if we think that the job is done and it is over and we have uh, emerged successful and everything is over, this will be the worst problem that uh, may grip us. So still I'm saying that uh, leaving home, unless it is essential, it runs counter to health protocols and not let's not visit each other at each other's homes any congregation any assembly any congregation and gathering is against the rules of course government institutions and uh, they should not also uh, do something that causes such gatherings you see we are still uh, believing our mentality is similar to the one that was 
was before the coronavirus outbreak. So let's not issue directives or take some action which uh, causes, uh, um, uh, which leads to some gathering and gathering of people. This is one of the cases of promotion of virtue is to encourage people to abide by social distancing plan and conform to health protocols and urge them to do so and ask them to do so and sometimes order them to do so when necessary. So, and the uh, um, prevention of vice is important. We should prevent people from uh, attending gatherings. Uh, what is vice today? Uh, vice is uh, actually thinking that we are still, uh, we are in a condition which was there before the coronavirus outbreak. Let me tell our people so far, no scientist, no country, no, inter no international organization, no person has been able to predict when the human community would get rid of the coronavirus pandemic. If it were possible to predict it, it would be very good, but it cannot, it is not predictable. This is an unknown virus. Humans are not familiar with it. Today they make a decision, then later on they change their decisions. Now they issue a directive, later on they change their directives because still they are uh, trying, they are uh, passing through the trial and error stage and they are conducting research in order to uh, reach uh, clear-cut directives. So because it is not that clear yet we may be uh, we may be we may need to tackle the coronavirus for one month 10 months or by years end we don't know that yet and as long as humans uh, uh, find a definitive cure and treatment for that or develop a definitive vaccine for that the circumstances remain the same so in the coming months until the uh, definitive result is achieved, our lives should be adapted to the coronavirus outbreak. We should live uh, amid the coronavirus outbreak and take the necessary precautions. And everything that we have done today, we have taken ne the necessary precautions and we have done everything gradually. And also we have abided by scientific and health directives. And every step that I have taken, I I have ordered the health ministry to monitor different actions or measures taken if there is any measure needs to be uh, revised and all that. Uh, we may change uh, actually or stop some of our measures if we come to, un come to understand that it has been wrong and all that. It is up to our people. If our people observe all health protocols and directives and if they they have come to the understanding that problems are not over yet, then we can su succeed through cooperation. We will move forward and uh, make progress. The provinces where uh, uh, provinces which have witnessed a downward trend in the number of infections of deaths, I need to make to concrete to uh, appreciate efforts in those provinces. Of course, uh, in the past, some provinces had an upward trend in the number of infections. Uh, still, in certain provinces, we have uh, problems, and we need to take more care in those vaccines so that we can successfully get through this. Another issue that I'd like to uh, draw your attention to is that today the whole world uh, have been affected economically and in terms of running the country. Who would have thought that a virus would be able to uh, affect economies so greatly? And all economies, all economic predictions uh, proved to be wrong due to this virus. Maybe six or seven months ago, 
There were some economic predictions, but all of them have changed now in terms of exports, imports, economic needs, especially in certain affairs like travel, tourism, transportation. You see, we have such a special situation and condition today. The situation, the condition of oil that you can see, it has been, uh, well, we have never ever seen that in so few, in so few months, the price of oil drops so dramatically. Dramatically, demand for oil drop has dropped so dramatically. So all, all oil-rich countries, all of us, well, we are suffering losses. But some countries are suffering very great losses, and some of them are uh, witnessing uh, not much. Uh, not much loss. I have seen some, I have read some news recently. Well, but the point is that it has created problems for all of us, for, for all of us. But uh, every country which has been more dependent on crude oil sales, the situation has become more difficult for those countries. But we with intentionally or unintentionally our because of the enemy sanctions or something else because we have been less dependent on oil revenues so definitely we have suffered less losses our economic conditions compared to those of the world uh, are much calmer and we thank the country's economy economic sector because over the um, in the uh, last three months months of the last Iranian year, uh, we witnessed uh, a growth both in agriculture and industry. Of course, that growth goes back to the situation before the coronavirus outbreak. However, I hope that we will continue, we will be able to maintain this growth in different sectors. So some companies, well, of course, they suffered losses. Uh, some companies but some companies have redoubled their production some products uh, the exports of some products have fallen and the exports of some products have increased so we should, in certain cases, we need to rethink our trend of exports, also the line of uh, the economic line. And certain economic activities need, we should help and contribute and support some certain economic activities. We have already discussed that in government meetings, in cabinet meetings, that we have asked the ministers to offer new solutions for today and our friends our folks have prepared those plans and we will put those plans to discussion in our later meetings uh, Mm, of course, figures and that we are seeing in the as the figures for inflation that was a good figure. Point to point inflation reached uh, has reached 19 percent, and over the past uh, 12 months the inflation rate uh, has reached 32 percent. That shows that overall the trend has been and on the decline. The inflation rate has been on the decline. Of course. We are having difficult situation, a difficult situation now, but we still hope that we will be able to further uh, contain the um, contain inflation. I'm asking the central bank to keep making efforts. To well, we are seeing that uh, different effort, different efforts have been made regarding uh, actually um, interest rates, uh, interest rates, banking interest rates have dropped somehow and the condition has improved, that means that under such circumstances we can create a situation where our economy will be overhauled. So what different, uh, what is being done by other sectors? This year we need to actually medium-sized workshops, small-sized workshops. We need to pay special attention to those workshops. In some export affairs, we know this year, like last year, we should rely on export of non-oil 
commodities. So under such circumstances, we witnessed that both in the stock exchange market, uh, some very good steps were taken regarding the companies related to social security investment companies. There were six companies that was welcomed by people. I hope that in the coming weeks and days and weeks, another major step will be taken by the finance and economy ministry, and uh, some stocks and shares are to be presented in the form of uh, units which are uh, um, ETF units. Or, uh, uh, those ETF units will be offered via major banks and insurance companies, and those stocks will be merged and will be presented and offered. Everybody can buy up to two million tomans worth of stocks, and we will give them discount as well. I believe that in the coming weeks, we will see good news coming in regarding the stock exchange, good news for people. And this is one of the solutions, one of our solutions uh, uh, in our uh, economic sector today, this year, uh, one solution is the proper activities of banks, also our capital market, and another key issue is employment and jobs. We should create jobs on the market and make up for unemployment. Of course, the figure for employment, our employment figure is good but before, until before the coronavirus outbreak. Even two months ago, I mean, even before the coronavirus outbreak affected the economy, we are seeing that we have good figures in 1.7% uh, unemployment dropped by 1.7% before the coronavirus outbreak. But as we are seeing now, we are in, spe in special circumstances and we need to prepare ourselves to somehow uh, reduce unemployment. And the last word I'd like to emphasize is that everything comes, everything can be achieved in light of unity and solidarity. And actually, a country which is disintegrated will get nowhere. You are seeing that in the United States today, the president of that country is inviting people to stage turmoil. It is unprecedented in history to see that this president of a country urge a group of people to stage protests and turmoil against some governors, against some legal governors, and he has adopted some um, improper positions against governors, and the country is in turmoil. They are, they don't know what to do with regards to the treatment of patients, uh, unemployment, and other problems. They have a, a lot of problems. They are facing a lot of problems. problems. Once they considered themselves as the master of the world, but now they are among the most affected countries of the world. We should learn, uh, this should be an object lesson for us. If our country is disintegrated, I mean, if everybody wants to uh, actually play his own tune somewhere, if we don't have unity, and if we are looking for a pretext to uh, do something and aggrandize problems and blow those problems out of all proportion and keep telling different institutions to pay attention to that specific mistake. Well, uh, the person who made that mistake has come forward and uh, uh, actually uh, said that he made a mistake. So let's not pinpoint these mistakes. Let's not forget that three years ago, the election campaign of three years ago is over. Now it is 2020, and next year we are going to have another presidential election. Let's forget that election campaign. That election campaign is gone, and the parliamentary election is gone.
Oh, that was live from the Iranian capital, Tehran. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani speaking at the Committee to Combat the Coronavirus uh, in Iran. Let's quickly go over what was just said. Uh, President Rouhani said that Iran can export some items, including uh, diagnosis kits and other items uh, which will be ready for export in the near future. He hailed medical workers, armed forces, and private sector for their efforts uh, in uh, combating the virus. He slammed those spreading rumors amid the outbreak of this deadly disease. He also urged uh, observing medical protocols and said thinking that things are back to normal is a grave mistake. He also added that uh, no one can say when the situation can be brought back to normal in specific and a vaccine uh, or when a vaccine can be found. So the situation remains unchanged until further notice. Thus, all medical protocols uh, must be maintained. Uh, he spoke about uh, um, changes in the oil market and said the situation is unprecedented. And uh, he hoped that Iran will continue economic growth after the uh, coronavirus as well. Also, he spoke of the latest inflation numbers in Iran, stated that that rate uh, is promising. We'll keep you posted on the details of that story and much more as we get it. You know, this is uh, normal for uh, countries that are advancing in their military sciences and military uh, defense to be active in space. Uh, the United States uh, actually has a space command. Uh, other major countries in the world uh, are active in space, that the militaries are active in space. And uh, Iran is uh, basically advancing in, in that area. And given the fact that uh, U.S. Uh, threatens to attack Iran militarily, Iran's military needs to be ready for an adversary that's uh, quite uh, harsh towards Iran and has been for many, many years. So this is something normal. Um, it's a it's an issue of national pride. Uh, obviously, uh, working in a space uh, is uh, not something that every country can do. Uh, so Iran is, uh, Iranian military at least, is proud of its uh, achievements. And the fact that the testing uh, of, uh, that was done was successful is another issue that uh, they are proud of. Yeah, I think given the fact that the Trump administration has put a maximum uh, pressure campaign on Iran. This is another sign that Iran is uh, exercising maximum resistance campaign, and this uh, launching uh, could be uh, an example of that uh, maximum resistance issue. Yeah, we're also talking about uh, the issue of uh, the U.S. sanctions and the maximum uh, pressure campaign adopted by the Trump administration. Uh, we're still seeing advancements being made, uh, uh, and in this tough time uh, where uh, Iran is also combating the uh, spread of the coronavirus under the U.S. sanctions, I think it's safe to say that the U.S.'s uh, maximum pressure campaign against Iran has failed. It has failed. I think today was an example of its uh, failure. Iran has shown that uh, Iran can advance uh, both uh, technologically and militarily with all the sanctions in place. And Iran is not only uh, not uh, defeated uh, because uh, of what the U.S. is doing to the country, Iran is actually fighting back and resisting the pressure that's coming from the United States. It may be uh, time for the U.S. to change policy, realizing that uh, Iranian forces not only can defend, uh, defend the country, in land and sea and air, they can also be active in a space. And this should uh, give uh, something to think about the U.S. Uh, government and its military. All right. Thanks a lot, Professor Fouad. He's Adi joining us from the Iranian capital, Tehran. Well, Iran's President Hassan Rouhani says uh, the collapse of oil markets have had less of an impact on the country's economy. Rouhani said Iran has also suffered from the plunge, but he added the blow was not that strong because the country's dependence on oil revenues has been reduced. Rouhani said Iran's economic condition is better than that of other countries despite U.S. sanctions and the coronavirus pandemic. He expressed hope that the economy will grow in the coming months. The Iranian president also called for continued cooperation among people and uh, all branches of power to stop the spread of the virus. Well, the Iranian government has launched a nationwide campaign to help the COVID-19 patients and their families. This comes in uh, the form of good of uh, food supply and job creation in collaboration with a key charity, which is focused on dealing with the problems of the underprivileged. Our correspondent, Rabbi Nodri, has the details. 
It's a new project focused on fundraising and creating new jobs for those affected by the new coronavirus and their families. The project is initiated by the government and a charity organization affiliated with the leader of Iran's Islamic Revolution. Officials say targeted assistance to affected people has never been this good. I'd like to thank the Satar charity for doing an excellent job in helping the coronavirus victims. The most obvious point, the impossibility of reaching communities when so many families live in remote areas. By fundraising and creating jobs, the Satar is doing its part during the public health crisis. Officials also say such efforts help bring more positive attention to the nationwide project. They say public organizations and armed forces have a huge potential to tap during times of crisis. The head of Setot, officially the Bureau for Execution of Imam Khomeini's orders, says they will try to protect families and businesses during the coronavirus crisis. We have created 120,000 jobs and supplied essential goods to 1 million families in rural areas. Small businesses which are at risk also get our support. There are so many costs to this awful outbreak. The pandemic poses a unique challenge in terms of identifying and protecting vulnerable families. We try and reach people who are locked in their homes and this is only one channel of assistance. Seeking a balance between protecting public health and shielding the economy, the government has refrained from wholesale lockdowns of cities like those imposed in many other countries. The government, however, has extended closures of schools and universities and banned cultural, religious and sports gatherings. The government has lifted the ban on intercity travel and ended closure of businesses that pose a minimum risk of spreading the virus. They have been allowed to reopen if they comply with declared health protocols. Raman Odiri, Press TV, Tehran. Uh, for a live uh, coverage, but appreciate Colin Campbell and Michael Springman being with us for that news review. We're going to cross over now back here in Tehran, uh, where the leader of the Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, is speaking. Let's listen up. In the first place, the advent of the holy months of Ramadan, I should offer felicitations to all those who can hear us and also all Muslim brethren across the world. And we're hopeful that Almighty God will give us the opportunity to perform our obligations during this month. It's a month of the Quran. This is a feature of this holy month where when the Holy Quran is recited more often. I've uh, uh, noted a number of uh, points regarding the Holy Quran, but we don't have much time. So briefly put, as regards the Quran, we have said times and again, and we have also heard on multiple occasions that Quran is the book of life, uh, and that's really true par excellence. You know, it's uh, life for it's a book for ways of life. If humanity uh, complies and try to find conformity. Uh, in their life with the teachings of the Quran, they will be prosperous, both in the world and the hereafter. That's the problem is that we don't do this. The problem is that we live our life, and uh, the way we live is not, is not compatible with the Quranic teachings. It's just like a, an individual who goes to a doctor, to a physician, and then he gets to receive the prescription from the doctor, but he does not get it filled, he doesn't take his medicine. So this is by just referring to the physician without getting the prescription filled and taking your medicine, it will be effect. That That's how we are these days. So the Quran is the book of uh, Gnosticism, book of knowledge. Uh, I mean, uh, your thoughts, your soul, you know, the uh, 
they get fed. Those people who are into this field, the Quran for them is a source. It's it's an, it's an eternal source. It's never ending. It's ever ever flowing. In addition to that, the Quran is also offers you how to live. Uh, in addition to religious knowledge, gnostic ideas, there are also some uh, practical. Uh, guidelines for life. Um, and, uh, it teaches you how to live. It, it makes your life replete with security, peace. There are ways of good health, safety, and security and a peaceful life. Quran shows you um, ways toward that. Uh, we have, we're facing discrimination, war, insecurity, and uh, we see that the values are being uh, trampled upon in the course of history, and humanity is witnessing this still. So the way to uh, tackle all these is uh, acting upon the Holy Quran. All those problems will be solved. I mean, if human societies uh, uh, act according to the uh, Quranic teachings. Uh, there are a number of them uh, that I will mention. If we act accordingly, then without uh, a doubt, they will be they will be saved from all these problems. In the Quran, we have thousands of uh, you know guidelines for living. Thousands of them. The way it looks. I mean, they, uh, Imam Ali has said that. And, uh, the Quran is profound, it's wonderful, it's graceful, it looks wonderful and graceful for those who have that special eye, you know, for the aesthetic eye, the way it looks wonderful. But it's also profound when you look at the depth. So these are the things that exist in the Quran. This is the way it looks. We're talking about the appearance of the Quran. And people like me, and this is what we understand from the Holy Quran, but what other people uh, understand, the scholars and those the close to God, those uh, the perception they have of the Quran, they, are, they go much, much beyond our perception. So, uh, when I'm talking about thousands of guidelines for life, this is what we just uh, get, make use of from the, the way the Quran looks, the appearance only, not the depth. So some of them have to do with regulating our lives. Uh, for instance, it says, there are some when it comes to uh, fraternities, brotherhoods, relations, goals, objectives, ideas, and inspirations, they confine all of them to the material world. I mean, what, what to them it means money, it means lust, it means this is this is a material world. That's what it means here. So they make friends because of this. They make enmities because of this. They establish relations for the same purpose. They make efforts in the same line. That's this is what the what God, God negates this. To, Making uh, such a life is negated by God. It's said that in the worldly life they will attain certain things in the transient and short period of lifespan in this world. But in the real world, the hereafter, that's when man will be living forever, they will get nothing, they will reap no profits. But on the other hand, you have some other regulating of your life. Well, that's what the Quran says. This is the second one. That means those people who, in this world, they are looking for good deeds. No, they're not looking for anything. They just want, they are asking God to give them something. That they don't, when they say, Give us good things and virtues in this world. Give us, bestow upon us what is in compliance with human nature, with real needs of humanity. And also, they're all asking for the hereafter and the blessings there. These are the people who the Almighty God uh, bestows upon them. God helps them uh, attain the real objectives of their life. So these are some of the Quranic verses that we have that they teach us 
guidelines for living. Or let's say, for instance, in the verse related to uh, the, the uh, Ben Israel <coughs> thinkers, they, who, elders, they told the Qarun that they didn't tell um, to do away with whatever he has. Uh, they said, you should use what your belongings as a tool, your money, the riches of the world. They are only a means of uh, getting higher and reaching sublime points, uh, reaching some spiritual status and position. It can serve as a tool. With money, you can develop the world. I mean, human lives could be saved by using money. Discrimination could be handled. The needy and the underprivileged could be saved from their destitute. So in the first place, what you have in, in your belonging, this is what God has bestowed upon you. And the second place, this is the way. You should spend it on the cause of God. Or else, I mean, if you... You also have your own share. You do have your own share in the middle of this. You can also make use of that. This is the way that Islam teaches you how to live, despite what that unwise individual, uh, who was a very affluent person, he said, that I was able to achieve all what I have. That was my own art, my own skills, but that's not the fact. Almighty God has just gave him the means and tools and he was able to use them and to reach his uh, objectives. So we have so many Quranic verses like this. They teach us, they give us some guidelines how to live. There are also some uh, verses that have to do with regulating your social relationships. You know, these are the applications that regarding social issues. Let's say, for example, in the Quran, it says, um, do not backbite. You know, this is regulating social issues. When you're backbiting, it means uh, you're filling your heart with some hard feeling. And also you do the same thing to another Muslim uh, brother or sister. And there's a hidden fact. There's a hidden fact. And then you simply reveal it for no good reason. This is a wrong thing that you do, it's immoral, and he may do the same thing to you. So this, uh, the social relationships are uh, thrown out of the right course, or somewhere else the Quran says that if uh, you oppose someone, if you're enmical, then it shouldn't make you uh, be unjust to him. You shouldn't. Uh, be an oppressor. You shouldn't brutalize the person. I mean, this is this is what you should apply in your life. Maybe maybe you are against someone, which we are antagonistic. Maybe, but you, because of your opposition, when he is right, you shouldn't conceal his right, <coughs> or you shouldn't trample upon his rights. And injustice should not prevail in that case. If you look at our own communities and gatherings. <coughs> with people who uh, we oppose. If we just act according to this Quranic verse, I mean, if we are not unfair about them, and if they are not unfair about us either, you will see how great the situation will be in our society. Or also, let's say, the Quran says, such verses, we have thousands of such, you know, guidelines, which says, do not go after something you are not confident about. You should have your trust. If you don't have a trust in something you're looking for, do not look for it. I mean, the journalism that the literature we, we are using in the world, they are doing exactly the opposite of this. I mean, they are <clears throat> spread mongering, they are, you know, fabricating lies and spreading them. They know nothing about them. On, on the basis of unfounded information, they simply spread them. And unfortunately, that happens across the world, also inside our own society. Now, this is what exactly the opposite of what's happening in the world these days. If we just listen to this advice, a large part of our problems will be solved. Or, again, in another the verse, it says, the person uh, never trust uh, a brutal person. I mean, never lean toward, let's say, 
trust in a despot. If you trust, put your trust in a despotic person or system, then you will see that Muslim communities, what you see is that they had their trust in the most brutal people or systems in the world and they can see the results. Or elsewhere, the Quran says that justice should prevail, justice and fairness in all aspects of your life. This is, should be on the top of the agenda. Or somewhere else it says, uh, when something is left in your trust, you should not betray the person's trust in you. Maybe a position is also given to you. It's not only money. It's not only something materialistic given to you in your trust. If you do not act correctly, this is kind of treason. It's considered treason. So if you just listen to this and take this advice, you will see what good results will achieve. So. What the Holy Quran has for us and offers us is, are these instructions, practical actual instructions or guidelines, or for, for instance, somewhere it says, after a certain verse that, that you know, talking about Satan, it was said that they are <clears throat> hatching a plot against you and they frightened them and that the Quran says, do not be frightened, be frightened. You should uh, pray God, you should trust God and you should stand strong against the enemy and then you can push the enemy back. So this is what, uh, you know, so they were trying to intimidate people to be afraid and to be frightened or scared of some powers, brutal powers. This is what Satan, what the devil does. And you see that in the course of history, also people who were afraid and scared of these powers, these are the ones who have uh, experienced bitter ordeals in their lives. You see Islamic communities, Islamic governments these days, if they but listen, if they're afraid of world powers, brutal powers, you know, Muslim countries neglect their own powers, the result is that they are oppressed. So we should, uh, we should learn not to be afraid of uh, despotic powers and bullying powers. I never forget in um, the year 1358, that is 1979, when American spies and the, the dinner of U.S. espionage, U.S. embassy, when it was captured by a youth, there were a number of people who were pressuring the Islamic uh, Revolution Council to set them free to release them. The three of us went to, from that council, went to the city of Rome, the late Imam Khomeini was uh, in Rome, me and Mr. Afsanjani, and then President Bani said, went to the late Imam and asked him what to do. And we asked him, we are being pressured to, uh, into releasing those uh, spies. And the late Imam said, are you afraid of America? I said, no, we're not scared. He said, so don't let him go. And that was what we had to do. I mean, if somebody was supposed to be scared of America and act accordingly, then the, they would gain some bitter results in those days. Now, we have seen instances where the powers uh, and also authorities in our own country, they were scared of the enemy. And this fear uh, put them into lots of trouble. The Quran says, do not be afraid of them. It says, only bear in mind what you have. When God says, take, take up, roll up your sleeves and uh, do struggle, do the mark of Islamic jihad, do it. When he says, stop it, you should stop it. And also, the Quran says, uh, say your prayers now on the occasion of the Ramadan, we should also pay attention. This is one of the Quranic injections, that prayers is for it's for the sake of remembrance, just to remember and mention the name of uh, God. If you do the same thing in our own lives, all of us can do that. We can say prayers, we should with full attention, and while saying prayers, we should not be distracted, we should be fully focused, and do this in remembrance of the Almighty God. Definitely it will have great effects in, our, in the upgradation and uplifting of our spirit and soul.
also elsewhere. You know, these are days of re repentance. These are days that you refer back to the Almighty God in the month of Ramadan. Hopefully, uh, God Almighty will give all the walks of life. Our people will give us the opportunity to be able to perform their religious obligations, their Islamic rituals and obligations, and act according to the Quran. These are the Quranic injections and instructions, thousands of them that could be applied. All of them can be applied in your life. Of course, the governments uh, have further responsibilities. Uh, the, the authorities, officials, they have they bear bigger responsibility. I don't want to take more of your time. We are out of time, I believe. We should be time for the as on for the call for prayer. So that's the end of my speech. I'm so delighted. Today we had a great session, and again I would like to thank all those involved to thank them again. Peace and blessings. Well, you have been listening to the speech uh, from the leader of the Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, and talked about, of course, this being the beginning of the month of uh, Ramadan and the importance of this month, congratulating everyone, and basically saying that this is the month of the Quran. This is the month that the soul, he said, is fed. And the source of that, of course, is the Creator himself, and of course, through the Quran, that we can uh, in prove our life, um, that the key to a good life actually all lies, the keys all lies in the Quran. And he says whether we're talking about from our health and security, safety, and just basically having a peaceful life, um, all of it is in the Quran, the way to do that. Him, he talked about many different subjects, um, touching on uh, basically those who um, abide, go by the um, worldly definition of even friendships, relationships, jobs, as opposed to those who are not seeking that worldly profit necessarily, um, but are trying to uh, uh, actually be uh, on a higher plane and uh, doing what he or she is supposed to do in this world, remembering that, again, this world is temporary and it is actually not the actual goal. He also talked about um, just basically uh, being careful with one's actions. This is very important as a Muslim uh, to uh, respect others, to make sure we stay away from um, gossiping. Um, and he talked about that in contacts, as a matter of fact, with the media. And he says what we can see today in the world media, unfortunately, um, is that uh, creating uh, untruths and labeling them as truths and also spreading rumors as if it was true, as if they have no consequences. This is a practice, he says, that definitely as Muslims we cannot do and the Quran tells us um, about not behaving in that way. He says no matter what, uh, Muslims must understand and the oppressed in general that they should not succumb um, to despotic systems and to oppressors and that the Quran tells us not to be afraid, never be afraid of the oppressor because with that fear it will actually bring about our own oppression and he used the example of a current situation in Muslim countries and he says you can see that those uh, uh, countries that fear um, the main oppressors of the time you can see that actually um, they are oppressed themselves they become more oppressed because of that fear and that he says that there is no reason to have that fear, that you put your trust in the Creator, you abide by the Quran, and God will help you in fighting um, the oppression. And he gave an example in 1979, he said, that he remembered um, when the um, American, uh, the formal American embassy called the Spy Den here in Iran had been taken, and the revolutionary students in Iran, um, all of them were under a lot of pressure, the officials, to, to basically let these uh, uh, former um, embassy people or spies actually to let them go. They went to Imam Khomeini and they asked, what should we do? And he says, are you afraid of America? And they said, no. He says, then you do what is right. You don't fear and uh, everything will be taken care of. Always go for what is uh, real and what uh, will be uh, expected of you by our creator. Well, that has been a short summary of uh, the leader of the revolution, uh, Ayatollah Said Ali Khamenei's uh, speech today, a very short speech right before, of course, the azan for Maghreb ending the day, uh, fasting day here in Iran. And I